All right, time for the math. Easy solution. We're going to discuss converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, basically, look at some temperature conversions. And uh, so we'll start off with here. We know that uh, Celsius is actually, um, we know that with Celsius, it was defined as zero degrees uh, Celsius is the freezing point of water. And 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. And uh, this this was this definition. Well, it's at standard eight here, standard atmospheric pressure or one atm pressure. I'll show another video what what this is. But uh, basically, this is this was the definition. But now, uh, now it's actually defined based on the Kelvin scale. So on the Kelvin temperature scale, we're using absolute zero and the triple point. I'll show this in, my, in another video. But it, but regardless, you still get zero. Uh, you still get this. And then if you look at Fahrenheit, so if you look at Fahrenheit here, this is uh, defined, this one's defined as 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit equals the uh, freezing point of, wa of uh, water. So it's the same thing as above, but we use 32 now. And 212 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to the boiling point. So this is how it's defined as, and has been defined as since uh, 1724 by some guy named Daniel Fahrenheit. So basic boiling point of water. And this one is uh, again at one ATM or standard atmospheric pressure at one ATM. Okay, now, so now if we wanna, let's say, uh, define a conversion uh, equation between the two is to get, let's say, degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we just look at these two and just, and we know that these are both linear scale is to define uh, based on linear scales just a line through these two points. So all we got to do is, let's just write what we know. We know that zero degrees Celsius is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and then we know that 100 degrees Celsius is just equal to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And then from this, uh, we know that they're both linear scales. So then we could just, uh, let's just plot these two, these two points out in terms of Let's, let's call this here. Let's draw a y equals x lines. Let's call. So let, let's y is equal to well degrees Fahrenheit and x. Let's define it as this is just degrees Celsius. So what x equals zero or zero degrees Celsius? It's Thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. So we get zero here. We get thirty-two here. And then at at x is a hundred. 100 degrees C, or basically we get 212. So this is right here. So we got two points, and we just draw a line. 21 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we just draw a line across it. And then this one is, well, y. We'll just, yeah, y is equal to, well, you could, this is just T of Fahrenheit. And it's a function of <clears throat> function of temperature in Celsius, because that's what x is. So basically, let's just find this equation. We know that y is equal to mx plus b. This is slope, and this is and where b is equal to this one right here, which would be just 32. Or you just plug in the values. We know that uh, let's say at at the coordinate 0, 32, we just plug this in. We get 32 equals to m times 0 plus b, so we get b is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And then to get to get m, well, we know that at, at let's say 100, this is 212. So then we get right here, we get 212 is equal to m times 100 plus 32, and then. So we just put this on the other side. We get 212 minus 32 divided by 100. I'll separate it out. Equals m. In this this case, these ones right here, you could subtract two. Here's two off. This is a, this is just 180. So we're gonna get this is equal to 180 over 100 equals m. And then you simplify this one divided by 10. You're gonna get yeah, so this to simplify this one, 18 over 10 divided by 2 on both sides, we're going to get 9 over 5. And 
there's there's what we have it right there. So then we get y is equal to nine over five. Let's draw this nine better. Nine over five x plus thirty two. And then if we put in our units and whatnot, just make this a bit easier to read. So we get t of f, t of Fahrenheit, is a function of, well, temperature in Celsius, which would equal to 9 over 5, 9 over 5 times t Celsius, which is x, plus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, there's our uh, equation. So that from this, we can convert any degree Celsius and whatnot. So let's say at so at five degrees Celsius, we know that this one is just. Then we just plug it in. So then we get T of F is equal to nine over five times five plus thirty-two. This is this cancels. So we're going to have nine plus thirty-two is equal to forty-one degrees Fahrenheit. So we, so you can get it from like like that. So that's an easier way to convert it. And also, let's say we want to know when, when is uh, T of F or degrees Fahrenheit equal to T of C, or degrees uh, or degrees Celsius. So all we do is let's just let them both equal each other. Let's go T of F is equal to nine over five T of C. I mean, it, this one is equal to a TFF, so this is right, TFF, 32 plus 32. And then s s uh, this, simplify this one, put it on both sides, 2 of F subtracted, we're going to get 1 minus 9 over 5 equal 32. Then solve for this one, we get T of F is equal to 32 divided by 1 minus 9 over 5 times this top and bottom by 5, just simplify it. So we get 5 over 5, we're not changing anything, so we're going to get here, 32 over, this one would be, this is 9 minus 5 is 4, so negative 4 over 5. And then keep simplifying this one, the 5 goes on top, so we get 32 over, well this is a negative, 4 times 5, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so we get negative 8 times 5, and this equals 2 negative 40, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which equals to negative 40 degrees Celsius. So that negative 40, this, they share the, both the same, so you don't need to convert anything. And so now let's just look at uh, incrementing uh, by, let's say, one degree Fahrenheit, what happens to degrees Celsius. Let's say if you increment by, say, is equal to just one, let's just say increment by one, then, then what happens in this case yeah, in this case, well, this is just say TF1, I mean, yeah, TF1 minus TF2. So we're just incrementing by 1. And if you were to write this equation out, so TF1 minus TF2 is equal to 9, 5, yeah, 9, 5 times TC1, and then plus 32, minus 9, 5, TC2 plus 32. Those little brackets. So what happens in this case, we're going to get, well, delta TF or change in TF is equal to, well, if it's equal to 1, then simplify this one, the 32 is canceled, so we're going to be left with 9 over 5 TC1 minus TC2, or incremented, this is just 9, 5 delta TC. So basically we get, if you re rearrange this one, we're going to get 1, well it's not 1, is equal to 9 over 5 delta TC. Rearrange it, we get the change in temperature of degrees Celsius is equal to 5 over 9. Yeah so, so, yeah, so 5 over 9 right here. So basically what this means is if you were to increase your increase Fahrenheit by 1 degree, so if you increase 1 degree Fahrenheit, this equals to a 5 over 9 increase in degrees Celsius. This is useful to know. So, so if you if you know, and it's useful to uh, just memorize this one because what you could do is if you if you know that the temperature increased by let's say 9 degrees Fahrenheit, all you got to do this one just equal to well 9 times. If you want to see what Celsius the change is, all you do is times by 5 over 9. 
degree Celsius. This wall is obviously cancelled, so this is equals to increase of five degrees Celsius. So yeah, the greater increase in Fahrenheit is the uh, increase less in in, in uh, degrees Celsius, almost by half. Well, it's all for today. Hopefully, you learned some uh, some new about Fahrenheit and degrees and how you can get the equation if you forgot it. Just remember thirty two and two twelve, and zero and one hundred as the freezing and boiling points defined based on Fahrenheit and Celsius. Also, all for today. Hopefully, you learned and uh, stay tuned for another math easy.